得先把他招出来。我该怎么做？必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先，必先， Asian horror movie fan would have come across these movies, a whole bunch of sameish-looking films called Bunshin Saba, or featuring the name Bi Xian in the title. From a distance, they all appear to be related, yet also look the same. A quick view of any of these films will lead to immediate disappointment when you realize it's a Chinese horror movie, a genre well known for their heavy government restrictions on content. No ghosts, no supernatural. No violence. Those restrictions haven't stopped filmmakers, though. In this video, we're going to take a look at the history of the Bunshin Saba films, the abuse of the name in Chinese horror cinema, and look at who Bi Xian is and why the names Bunshin Saba and Bi Xian seem to be frequently confused and interchanged with each other. Welcome to Asian Film Fans. Back in 2004. Korean film director Byon Kian released his third horror film, translated to and marketed in the West under the title Ouija Board. Its original Korean name was Bunshin Saba. The movie was solid but not well received. It tells the tale of a schoolgirl and her mother who move from Seoul to a small and remote village where she is constantly bullied and harassed by a gang of girls at a new school. Reaching her limit with the bullying, she uses an Ouija board to call Bunshin Saba, a spirit, to help her get revenge. In several Asian cultures, calling upon spirits via an Ouija board is an act more commonly associated with high school students. They might ask the spirit about if their crush loves them back or if they did well on a school test. The running theme with calling the spirits is that the pen used by the students must be buried when finished. Otherwise, the spirit becomes restless and will cause mischief. The origins of Bunshin Saba are a bit unclear. Some texts claim the origin is from the Tang Dynasty or even earlier in China. Taoist priests would call upon a spirit via an Ouija board for divination purposes until it became a popular pastime between ordinary Chinese citizens. If this is the case, then the spirit would indeed be Bi Xian. Bi Xian translating to Pen Fairy. But other texts claim the origin is from Japan, where their version of an Ouija board called the Kokuri San calls upon a mixed animal spirit when summoned to answer the caller's questions. Either way, with Korea in between Japan and China, it was only a matter of time before they would develop their own urban legend about a spirit called from an Ouija board, and thus Bunshin Saba was born. In 2012, director Byung Ki An, along with several of his original crew members from his 2004 film, teamed up with Chinese movie producers for a three-movie deal. Searching for a title, they ended up with Bi Xian, which begins the confusion that continues today. Looking for a title that was more marketable in his home country of Korea, it was decided that the movie would be known as Bunshin Saba internationally. Technically, this makes some sense. Bunshin Saba is the name of the Korean spirit, who is the equivalent of Bi Xian, the Chinese title of the first film. The problem was that Bi Xian, as we know her, was not in the film. The first Bunshin Saba film from 2012 tells the tale of an author and her son who relocate to a large house in the middle of nowhere, where she is inspired to write her latest novel. But supernatural things start occurring in the house. Her son's behavior changes. And it is revealed that the house is actually her childhood home, and the spirit her son sees is a figment of her imagination. Chinese horror movie censorship kicking in here. The spirits are not real, and in fact, she's just a little bit crazy. But think about it for a moment. An author traditionally uses a pen, and there are spirits in the film. Thus, pen spirit or pen fairy, aka Bi Xian, makes sense, right? But as you can also see. It has nothing to do with the director's 2004 Korean title. A year later, Byung Ki An followed it up with Bi Xian 2 or Bun Shin Saba 2, as it's more commonly known internationally. This time, he decided to remake his first feature film, the 2000 film Gawi, also known by the rather generic title of Nightmare. 
This movie is about a group of friends who are desperate to keep the truth behind the suicide of a girl a secret. Again, not a bad film, but the way the film ends made it very easy for a Chinese version to be created. With some slight modifications, such as removing the nudity, toning down the violence, and improving the ending, this ended up being superior to the original film and was the fourth highest grossing Chinese horror movie at the box office ever just behind the two House That Never Dies films and the 2011 film Mysterious Island. But what's unique about the Chinese version of the film is that Bianchian added a new scene about midway through the movie, a Ouija board scene that wasn't in the Korean original. And it's here where Bixian, or at least the idea of Bixian everybody knows, makes her first modern horror movie appearance in a Chinese film. Riding the coattails of the massive profits brought in from the first two films, 2014 saw Bianchian finish his BCN trilogy of movies with another original title about a woman just released from a mental institute who moves with her young daughter to a house in a small village. She takes on a nanny for her daughter but develops a strange bond with her where again they explore the idea of BCN and playing with an Ouija board. This film isn't too bad either, with some excellent horror imagery and about as creative as Chinese horror cinema could possibly get, while it explores the often ignored stigma behind mental illness. And it's from this point on where the Bi Xian confusion begins. But firstly, who is Bi Xian? Bi Xian, the pen fairy, the pen spirit, the pen deity, is summoned via a Chinese Ouija board. Traditionally, she's an evil spirit that lives in school campuses. Like all Ouija games, it's best played with two or three people and done between 11pm and 1am in either an abandoned classroom or a classroom where someone's died. Each person puts their hand on the pen and calls out if Bixian is there. And the rest is history. As mentioned, in China, this first started from Taoist priests using the technique to talk to the dead and over time, it was co-opted by students and turned into a game. For the purpose of this video, we're only going to look at movies with the physical character of Bi Xian in them, and not movies that just make reference to her via the use of an Ouija board. So let's go back two years to 2012 with the horribly translated title, Death Is Here. Released the same year as Bianchian's first Chinese Bunshin Saba film, the Chinese title for this film actually translates to Pen Fairy Horror. Released in a time before web streaming was more popular for these types of movie releases, this movie had a theatrical release and actually came out one month before Bianchian's film. However, it wasn't well received, with a low 3.4 rating out of 10 on Chinese movie portal site Dolban. It tells the tale of four bored friends who decide to play the Pen Fairy game, but she never actually appears in the movie and everything that happens is explained via something not supernatural. Overacted, badly directed. This resulted in the filmmakers deciding to skip making Death Is Here 2 and go straight to Death Is Here 3, or Pen Immortal Cry 3 as it roughly translates to, in 2014, this time releasing three months before Bianchian's third Bunshin Saba film. While the movie tries really hard to be scary, it has an even lower rating than the first, but it finally introduces the world to the first kind of image of BCN that will become more commonplace. A girl with white skin, long black hair in a red dress. Since then, the image of BCN has been refined to have a longer dress, hair that covers the face, and long red nails. From this point on, BCN and Bunshin Saba had become Chinese horror movie folklore. 2015 saw the release of The Pen Fairy Is Back or The Return of Pen Fairy and Campus Mystery, which is also known as Pen Fairy Spell. But Bixian only appears in name. She never makes an actual appearance in any of these films. It's 2016 when viewers start to see an influx of Bixian named related movies. There's The Life and Death of Pen Fairy, When Pen Ghost Meets Plate Ghost, and The Shadow of the Pen Fairy, also known as Bloody House, amongst others. But the movie you're probably the most interested in 
is definitely the one that is the most interesting of them all, and it's legitimately the first time we actually see Bi Xian on screen. Over in Japan at the same time, a crossover movie was about to be released pitting two of the biggest spirits in J-horror against each other, Sadako and Kayako. A ridiculous idea that started as an April Fool's Day joke and ended up becoming a real film, the movie was moderately well received, but its impact in China could not be understated. J-horror films are only available via bootleg form in China. You want to watch The Ring? Then you'll need to buy a pirated DVD or Blu-ray disc, or download an illegal copy off the internet full of advertising for adult websites. So China did what China does best. They made a knockoff, but a knockoff so well received it spawned two sequels. And thus, Bunshin Saba vs Sadako was born. Except it's really Bixian vs Sadako, being that Bunshin Saba is the name of the Korean spirit. Completely unofficial, and not following the rules of the Ring series at all, Bunshin Saba vs Sadako pits the Japanese spirit against the Chinese spirit, in a ridiculously fun movie that makes no sense at all. When a school bully is sent the cursed video to watch, Sadako appears and finishes her off. But Sadako decides to go after the three girls who gave the bully the video link. And after the death of one of the girls, the remaining two decide to call up Bi Xian for help, and a battle between the two of them occurs. Lots of flying around and stake flinging result in one of the craziest Chinese horror movies ever. And in 2017, the filmmakers followed it up with the most popular film in the series. Bunshin Saba vs Sadako 2, also known as Penny Mortal or Pen Fairy vs Sadako 2, continues on the crossover theme when a girl watches the cursed video which calls Sadako. After her roommate is also killed by Sadako, the remaining friends visit a professor, an expert in ghosts, who hopes that Bixian might be able to help them fight Sadako. This crazy film ends up with the main character waking up in a mental hospital, having dreamt the whole thing. But it doesn't stop the movie from becoming a riot of a time, and one of the most enjoyable modern Chinese horror movies ever made. 2017 was a solid year for Chinese horror films, where lots of weird and wacky ideas were explored, such as a ghost who haunts a hairdresser shop that doubles as a hotel, a cursed university graduation photo that's the spirit of a dead girl, and a movie about a pair of cursed embroidered shoes. And if any of those films interest you, trust me when I say they're all terrible. Fun, silly, stupid, and terrible. Not to be outdone with Sadako having her own movie series in China, Kayako from The Grudge makes her first appearance in a Chinese horror film with the awful film called The Curse of Bixian, also known as Bunshin Saba vs Kayako, and also strangely known as just Bunshin Saba, because that's not confusing, right? In this film, a property developer is desperate to buy the last remaining house on a block to build some villas. Having difficulty scaring him off, Bi Xian makes a strange appearance to make out as if the house is cursed. But then in a horrible twist that makes no sense and leaves the viewer very frustrated, Kayako appears. And then Bi Xian and Kayako decide to fight in a battle that also makes very little sense. It makes even less sense when it's revealed both spirits are actually two of the girls in the movie wearing masks because they are seen flying around the house courtyard as if they were real spirits. This is definitely one to avoid. The trouble is with so many different names, it gets a little hard to do that. But 2017 also saw something strange. Bixian took a backseat to a few other fairies. Dixian, the plate fairy, makes another appearance in a film where she goes up against poor old Sadako. Another film, simply called Disc Fairy, also appears. A chopstick fairy movie also exists called The Curse of Chopsticks that was actually released in 2016. By this stage, Bixian had really only appeared in three films, but her name had been associated with over 10 different titles. Many of those films are terrible, with a combination of half-decent productions to obvious student films. 2018 continued the strange fairy theme with a movie about Taishian, the bowl fairy, and another film about the candle fairy. To the casual observer, it would appear that filmmakers were either running out of ideas or desperate for a hit. And of course, all of these films were terrible. 
BCN wouldn't be seen for another two years, until 2021. But in the middle of that, another great horror movie was released, Dish Fairy, or more commonly known as Mortal Ouija, which was released in 2019 to a lot of acclaim and an impressive return at the box office. Well worth a watch if you can hunt it down with English subtitles, and a rumoured sequel is being worked on. And all of this brings us to the latest film featuring Bi Xian, the strangely titled Bunshin Saba Hoichi the Eelis. And no, Bi Xian doesn't fight poor Eelis Hoichi. Rather, this film was originally set to release in 2020 as Bunshin Saba vs. Sadako 3. The movie was reworked, with the Thai Kumanthong Jerona added to the lineup of spirits, with an entertaining three way fight at the end of the film between Bi Xian, Sadako, and the Kumanthong. It's fun, and it's very much worth a watch for its pure craziness. Is the era of Bixian and Bunshin Saba movies over? While China continues to make very poor horror films, they tend now to explore themes of ancient curses. Spirits, fairies, and other creatures from Japan seem to now be off the table. With the move to monster movies, low-budget filmmakers have found more success and profit with those types of films, and with the ongoing threat of a copyright claim from Japan over the use of the Sadako name, we might not see a fourth movie in the series, which would be a shame as all three movies have been extremely enjoyable in their own right, even if they have nothing to do with the original Japanese Sadako character. So next time you see a list of movies with Sadako versing Bunshin Saba, be confident to know that not only do these movies have nothing to do with the original Japanese series, but also have nothing to do with the Korean movie either. Western movie sites don't seem to help in alleviating this confusion. IMDb returns eight films with Bunshin Saba in their titles, seven of them being Chinese and four of them being spirit battle films. We hope this video has helped to remove any confusion between Bunshin Saba and Bixian movies and the character of Bixian herself. Did we miss anything? Leave a comment or question below and we will get back to you. We hope you enjoyed this video press the like button if you did, and consider subscribing for more videos about Asian horror films.